Glory to God. I mean, the, 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 the further away you get from this, the harder it's going to be. If you can't do it now, it's, it's not going to happen. Amen. <laughs> and I felt those words come up in me. I just let them rip. Praise the Lord. I couldn't hear me, and I didn't care. And, and I said, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. And from that time on, I realized that I could speak. I could speak. I could speak. Now, some people don't, don't agree with that, but the Bible teaches that. You just don't know. People's told you, lied to you, brother, sister. They've lied to you. They think the Holy Ghost ain't even for today. They think it was only for the apostles. You can't take that kind of stuff, and, and you, you can't get nowhere in the Word with that. You know how far you'll get? You'll get on the... On, on the about the second or third page of the book of Acts and your doctrine runs into all kinds of trouble. Glory to God. Aren't you glad? Now, now let me tell you this. Now, then if you start arguing with the, what the Bible says and you can see it there, now you're going to be dishonest. See? Instead of being truthful and believe in what the Bible said, then you're going to be dishonest. Because, see, some people say, well, you know there on the, on, the, on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts, they were all there, all those people were there, and they heard them speak in their own language. Like, like they was talking to them. It doesn't say they was talking to them in their own language. He said they heard them speaking in their own language the wonderful works of God. That's what they heard. It wasn't talking to them. He said because they were all confused and said, confused? Well, confusion don't come when somebody's talking to you, does it? Huh? Confusion comes when you don't know what this is. And they knew these men were Galileans, and they knew they didn't speak in those languages, but they heard them. They heard them in their own language. These apostles, these, well, actually, this 120. It wasn't just the 12 or the 11 field that day, or 12. It was 120. 120. Right. So to say that only the apostles were filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke with tongues is to be dishonest. To try to prove something that's not even right. Because there, there was 120. Now, it went right on over. Then preacher, uh, Peter preached that message and 3,000 people got saved. They said, what must we do? He said, repent and be converted and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. These 3,000 people? I thought it was only for the apostles. Huh. And then we get on over, just in a few more pages, and maybe a quite a bit of time has passed by. We don't, I don't know how much myself, but anyway, he gets over there, and there's Philip up there in Samaria preaching and, and doing miracles, casting out devils, and the sick's getting healed, and he preaches Jesus, and there's great joy in the city. And, and, and they were baptized, both men and women. They believed. Well, the question pops up now, was he saved? And it shouldn't even be a question. Of course it was. How can you believe in Jesus and be baptized and, and not be saved, Brother Herb? Well, Jerusalem, uh, the, the elders there at Jerusalem got a hold of it and said, I don't know, you know, there's more, to what, there's more than just what's written on this page, but that's all we need. And they sent Peter and John up. Peter and John. How come? Ain't Philip up there? Philip's up there, ain't he? He's doing a pretty good job, ain't he? He's casting out devils. They, they saw the devils come out. They saw the sick being healed. They said, no, send Peter and John up. Peter and John. And the Bible says when, when Peter come up, he prayed for them. Prayed for them. What for? Get saved? He prayed they'd be saved. Well, my doctrine's running into problems here. I'm running into all kinds of roadblocks and I'm going to be dishonest if I try to move them out of the way and say, no, this don't count. I'm going to be dishonest with people. 
well, something's going on here. What did he say for him to do? He said, he said he prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. He prayed for them. Then he started laying hands on them. Now, I've never heard in all my life or, or read in the Bible anywhere where you'd lay hands on people to get them saved. Does, the Bible does not teach that anywhere. And you're dishonest to say it does. Ain't that right? And he prayed for them, laid hands on them, God filled them with the Holy Ghost. So here's some more people being filled. I thought only the apostles need to be filled. Huh? Oh, that tongue's passed away when the apostles. Well, wait a minute. Wasn't some more people filled too? Wasn't these people here at Samaria filled? Hmm? Huh? Looks to me like nobody needs to be filled but them. This is foolish. Uh, stuff, ain't it? But you know, this stuff is believed all over the place. Some of our, a lot of our churches believe this kind of stuff. 